project really stemmed from kind of my own frustration of being a student. And I think if you've gone through the website just a little bit, you've probably seen some of those stories, um, is the fact that high school and the administration at a lot of these schools do prioritize getting everyone to college. Um, but they don't really unearth what that actually looks like. And nowadays they're doing a little bit more of a better job at like bringing in their old alumni and having panels and having talks, but that's only for communities that are relatively well connected and for students who actually put their foot out there and say, hey, high school, like, thank you so much, but let me come back and let me talk to some of you know the underclassmen and the friends. And it's really hard to facilitate that connection. So when I went to college, I was totally one of those students who had worked really, really hard all through high school and really tried to make up for basically almost flunking out or failing my freshman year of high school. But it's freshman year of high school. You can do a lot of kind of saving of your grade. Um, and what ended up happening is I applied to school in secret. Um, from my from my parents, and it was a private school out in Boston. And at that point, I think you just get so used to or desensitized to the price tag of these things. And I didn't really understand the scope of what it meant to pay for college. And my parents, like many parents, I think, operate nowadays under this, don't worry about it, we'll take care of it. They tell their students, just get in you worry about yourself and getting into school and do the best you can and figure out what you want to do. But the price tag is actually really, really important. Um, and at the end of the day, I very quietly gave my parents the acceptance lever to this private school in Boston. And they basically just started crying because they could not afford it. Mm. Um, and I got nearly a 90% scholarship to this school which brought it down almost to a CSU. I'm from California originally. Um, and with that in mind, I said, mom, dad, what do you mean? You know, like you had always pushed me and I've worked so hard and I became that AP student and I really don't necessarily enjoy school, but I know I need to go to college, but we can't afford it. Um, and they said, don't worry, we'll figure it out. Just go to a state school. Please just go to a state school, stay here. And in part of like anger and frustration and trying to figure it all out before I had to make a decision, I just said, never mind. I don't really want that. I, if we can't afford it, I don't want debt. We've talked about how hard that can be and how colossal that is. And I think in some ways, my father was really cognizant of the fact that he didn't want to pass down something called, um, or what is referred to as like the brown tax, right? Where you as a first generation college student from a family of five POC, right? Have to then take care of and take on the financial burden of leading your family. And he was very, very cognizant of that because he didn't go to school, right? And he's still responsible in a lot of ways for his extended family. And he didn't want that for us. So I went to community college and I just kind of figured it out myself, but I couldn't get any of the information from the counselors. I would actually drive to our community college the last couple of months of high school and every day hope that if I just asked the same question again, Hey, can I talk to a counselor here? Hey, I'm trying to figure out, you know, how to apply or how to set up my classes that a counselor would finally kind of notice me and pick me up and hand me some resources and say, yeah, this is what you do. This is how you transfer to UC, a CSU, to a private school, whatever. But that's not actually an option until you enroll and have started classes. Mm -hmm. I went to my high school. And I asked the same thing, but they didn't have any resources. And they kept telling me, oh, go ask the counselors at the community college, but they won't see you. So it becomes kind of this like, oh, they're responsible for that. Actually, it's your responsibility. Actually, it's their responsibility. And finding the information you need is really hard for, quote unquote, a motivated traditional student. Well, then how hard can it be for someone who has no structural support or is kind of just beginning their journey of 
discovering what it is they want to do and how to find those scaffoldings. So we made the platform to kind of answer those beginning questions and also for parents who are really worried about their students going to community college. My parents were pissed because they thought that I had put in all of this effort and I think that they were mad on my behalf too mm. of hey, you've done something, you've tried, look at where you started school, where we thought you would end up kind of like my older siblings who dropped out or, you know, had to get a GED of some sort for various reasons, right? Um, but you, you've you done that. Why don't you reward yourself? Go to a college, go to a four-year. So in some respects, it's the fact that you have to change the narrative of education too, um, in your own communities of, this is a legitimate pathway. It has been here for years. It is structurally sound. Yes, perhaps you are missing out on a lot of the life experiences of going to a four year and being part of the party scene and um, getting to spend that year away from your family. But at the same time, you can still do that. You just have to think a little bit more creatively of how to build that for yourself. <laughs>